peace is really connected with perception. And one of the ways you can see the connection between peace and perception, observation, seeing, is that where there is less observation or seeing or perception, where we, we as a humanity turn our eyes away, there tends to be also much less peace. And this is quite a disaster in the way it plays out in the human realm. For example, the whole uh, empires of suffering and pain connected with what we socially see as forbidden. What we socially see as forbidden and which we refuse to look at, we turn our collective eyes away. Uh, child abuse, uh, incest, uh, children with AIDS. There are areas where we simply withdraw our perception collectively. And this creates such a, uh, a freeze of suffering which is almost moving by a different time scale. It's because it will it stays frozen this traumatic ball of suffering until it is perceived because through the perception, through the love which reaches out towards it and the peace which underlies that it can be reintegrated into the human body, into the human whole. I mean the collective human body. Before that there's the added isolation of uh, but the added suffering of isolation, it's not part of humanity. We don't see that. The elephant man, we don't want to see him. So the suffering of being uh, maybe physically limited or psychologically hurt or, or too much exposed to cruelty against the form uh, is even more increased because there's an isolation, which is a deep rejection which is one of the strongest forms of cruelty. And it's bad enough when it's individual, like mummy doesn't see it, but when it's humanity will not see it. It's humanity in a way it's cutting off its own legs because it is there anyway. So in our little world, uh, when moving with the energy of peace, which very much is carried by our perception, in a way our perception our perceiving of ourselves is driven by love. But it's supported from the basis by peace and we're able to allow whole aspects of ourselves collectively or individually to exist because of this peace. In peace there's a release. It can exist, let it be. Which is extremely important because the other side is in rejection. So peace is supremely unconditional. What's conditional is our willingness to allow. We don't want certain things for whatever basically selfish reasons, whether it's selfish as an individual, we don't want to be disturbed, or selfish collectively, that there's a kind of harmony which gets more and more small that we share collectively until you've got the kind of social workers' rules and the peace and the anything else disturbs that. So in the expansion of perception, we're doing an enormous service also in bringing peace, especially on the level of the mind, in that we allow all thoughts, all ideas, all perspectives to exist on the mind at the same time, without any of them saying anything about that which allows, about who we are or who the other is.